Hello and welcome back. This is the first video in Section 8, Extending Our App. This video is titled, Flask Debug Toolbar. In this section, we are going to cover three different Flask extensions that we will be adding to our app. We will also look at Flask Cache and Flask Assets. These extensions have a focus on speeding up our app while also providing some tools to help in development. In this video, we will cover the Flask extension, Flask Debug Toolbar, and how it can be used to aid development of our application. Flask Debug Toolbar is a simple Flask extension that adds a lot of debugging information directly into the web page. This sidesteps the need for a traditional debugger or a lot of print statements when trying to debug a part of your application. The first step is to install Flask Debug Toolbar with pip in the terminal. Just like all of the other Flask extensions we have used, we will need to initialize the extension in extensions.py. Then, we will import the extensions object into underscore init underscore dot py and register it to the application object. And that's all that is necessary for Flask Debug Toolbar. If your configuration object is setting debug to true, then the toolbar will appear. If debug is false, then it will be hidden. Now let's go to the web browser to see the toolbar in action, as well as explore all of its different features. As you can see when I load the home page, the toolbar is automatically shown because we are using the debug configuration object, which sets debug to true. If you don't want to see it or you're not using it, you can just click on the hide button at the top. Let's walk through its features. Clicking on the button that displays your current Flask version will display all of the versions of the Python packages you have installed with pip. This is useful if you have a bug in your code, which is caused by out-of-date software rather than your code. Next, clicking on the button with the label Time will give you a breakdown of how much time was spent on the CPU rendering the page. The next two buttons have to do with the HTTP request and response and allow you to see exactly what the browser requested and how the server sent back its response. The next button, labeled config, lists all of the Flask configuration variables, including config variables for the Flask extensions. The button labeled templates shows all of the templates that were rendered for this page load, as well as the data that was passed to them. Next up is the SQL Alchemy button, which shows all of the queries that were passed to the database and how long they took. You can even press the Select and Explain buttons. To get a list of all of the rows that the query returned and how the query was executed on the database. The Logging button is for capturing any calls made to a Python logging object in the view. We don't use any of the loggers in the logging module, so there is nothing here. The Route List button shows all of the routes in the application, which functions those routes are tied to, and which HTTP methods those functions accept. Finally, we have the Profiler, which is disabled by default, so click the check mark and reload the page. Clicking the Profiler button again shows a list of every function that was called when the page was loaded, how many times that function was called, how much time each call took, and what was the total time spent on all of the calls to that function. This is extremely helpful when trying to speed up your application, as your intuition of what is slowing down your app is a lot less accurate than the real information and can lead to a lot of wasted time. So to wrap up, we have installed a very useful extension that provides a lot of information when developing our application. It saves a lot of time when trying to debug, as well as help identify the bottlenecks in your code. 